If you're watching this channel, it's because you don't enjoy watching the world squander what Christendom built, but you want to do your part. And chances are you've heard me mention a great means by doing just that. Email made by and for Catholics. Check out fide.email. That's F-I-D-E-I dot email. Built for Catholic individuals, families, organizations, and groups. They're private, secure, and of course, they're Catholic. And they're offering two months off on your first year for an annual subscription if you enter the coupon code return to tradition without spaces that's the name of this channel without spaces at checkout i so rarely get to bring you good news that it's truly a momentous occasion when i can unfortunately this is the kind of new good news that's wrapped up in bad everything you're about to hear today should have been said by bishops ordinaries who stood up and told Catholic politicians, no, you may not receive the sacraments. You've excommunicated yourselves. You need to publicly repent of promoting various evils that the secular world seems really hell-bent on having pushed on them, and you need to repent. Should be bishops saying this, right? Should be priests saying this. But all too often, it's not them. And I know why priests don't say it, because if they say it, they get canceled. But bishops, on the other hand, have a little more protection from that. Unless you're Bishop Strickland, of course. But most bishops can get away with it. So why haven't they spoken up? Our story is about a Catholic celebrity, Harrison Butker. He's a Kansas City Chiefs football player. I don't normally talk celebrity stuff here, or even Catholic celebrities. I mentioned Shia LaBeouf's conversion briefly and mentioned another one. But I'm not one who focuses on the conversion of celebrities to the faith, other than to say, let them be Catholic for a while, hopefully before they go on and take a public Catholic life. That's should just general good advice. There are exceptions to that rule. But that's not the case here today. Today, this football player, one of the highest profile in the country, especially in Catholic circles, gave the commencement address at Benedictine College, and he, um, he told the truth. He called out the bishops. Usually... Um, Commencement addresses are are really just fluff. They're they're good times. They're they're happy, positive speeches. Occasionally, you might get somebody who has a, a political axe to grind who gets up there and gives the, uh, the 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 party line, usually from the left. That's often how it goes. But this is different, and so we turn to Catholic News Agency for this headline: Chiefs Harrison Butker chides Catholic leaders in Benedictine College commencement address. It's sad when you have celebrities having to do this, when this should be something the bishops are doing. Could you imagine if a bishop, the, whoever the local ordinary is there, gave the commencement address and gave everyth said everything you're about to hear today? Could you imagine? That would, be, that would be incredible. But we don't live in that world, because the only ones who seem to have the freedom to do it are those who have high enough profile and are in an industry where they're unlikely to get canceled. Even though, I will tell you right now, Harrison Butker risks getting canceled for this address. Obviously, he doesn't care. So, just keep him in your prayers. Say a quick prayer and thanksgiving for him taking a courageous stand like this as he told the truth to these students' faces. From the article, quote, Kansas City Chiefs place kicker Harrison Butker offered some pointed criticism of Catholic bishops and priests along with advice to college graduates in his commencement address at Benedictine College on Saturday. Catholic bishops should be more like St. Damien of Molokai and less concerned about what civil and cultural leaders think about them, the three-time Super Bowl winner and outspoken Catholic said. St. Damien, a missionary priest from Belgium, spent nearly 16 years ministering to lepers in Hawaii before passing away of their disease. His heroism is looked at today as something set apart and unique when ideally it should not be unique at all, Butker told the graduates at the Catholic Liberal Arts College in Atchison, Kansas on May 11th, the day after St. Damien's feast day. For as a father loves his child, so a shepherd should love his spiritual children too. That goes even more so for our bishops, these men who are present-day apostles. And quote, Why don't they have the courage that St. Damien of Molokai had? He St. Damien, when he went to Hawaii to, ser to, to serve those he did, he knew what was going to happen to him when he did that. He knew what the cost would be. He spent 16 years among them. He knew that every single day that he spent there was a chance that he would catch the thing that, that which they had been afflicted with. And he was willing to pay the price for that. Bishops wear red to remind themselves and those they encounter 
that of the blood of the martyrs, that bishops sh should be willing to sacrifice everything and follow in their footsteps if need be. Where is that attitude today among the bishops? That's what he's calling out here. And I wish, I wish that spirit was widespread among the bishops. I'm sure you can name a couple of bishops who might have this, but I want you to remember something here. Anybody who had jurisdictional authority as a bishop in the church in 2020 denied everybody the sacraments. They went along with the lie. Remember that. And he'll invoke that here too. Back to the article, quote, he said, bishops are rightly not politicians, but shepherds, but they have given up their influence by not leading properly. Our bishops once had adoring crowds of people kissing their rings and taking in their vic every word, but now relegate themselves to a position of inconsequential existence. Now, when a bishop of a diocese or the bishop's conference as a whole puts out an important document on this matter or that, nobody even takes a moment to read it, let alone to follow it, Butker said. No, today our bishops are far more concerned with keeping the doors open to the chancery than they are with saying the difficult stuff out loud. It seems that the only time you hear from your bishop is when it's time for the annual appeal, whereas we need our bishops to be vocal about the teachings of the church, setting aside their own personal comfort and embracing their cross, he said. He also criticized dear leader and other Catholic leaders, end quote. And then he goes on to list all the grave moral issues of our day. Uh, what we have to call on this platform of the Moloch ritual, as well as uh, institutionalized cultural sterility, all of it, and says the bishops should be standing up. He notes also that dear leader was on stage in, in recently participating in an address given by an advocate for the Moloch ritual, or dare I say, a priestess of Moloch, and they talked openly about needing to make sure that evil act was, able, was available to anyone who wanted it without restriction, and dear leader made the sign of the cross when she said it. That caused enormous scandal when it happened, and for good reason. But what did the bishops do? They were silent. Harrison Butker is right to call them out for it. Quote, Our own nation is led by a man who publicly and proudly proclaims his Catholic faith, but at the same time is delusional enough to make the sign of the cross during a pro Moloch rally. He has been so vocal in his support for the, for the uh, ending of the innocent that I'm sure to, to many people it appears that you can be both Catholic and pro Moloch, Butker said. He is not alone, he added, from the man behind the 2020 sh uh, closing of everything to the people pushing dangerous ideologies of the flesh onto the youth of the media, they all have a glaring thing in common. They are Catholic. This is an important reminder that being Catholic alone doesn't cut it. I know that my message today had a little less fluff than is expected for these speeches, but I believe that this audience and this venue is the best place to speak openly and honestly about who we are and where we all want to go, which is heaven, Butker said. To be faithful, he said, Catholics must address publicly hot-button cultural issues. These are the sorts of things we are told in polite society to not bring up. You know, the difficult and unpleasant things. But if we are going to be men and women for this time in history, we need to stop pretending that the Church of Nice is a winning proposition, he said. We must always speak and act in charity, but never mistake charity for cowardice. As we saw during the events of 2020, too many bishops were not leaders at all. They were motivated by fear, fear of being sued, fear of being removed, fear of being disliked. They showed by their actions, intentional or unintentional, that the sacraments don't actually matter, Butker said. Because of this, countless people expired alone, without access to the sacraments, and it's a tragedy we must never forget. End quote. Where's the lie? He's not wrong about a single thing said there. They became instruments for the great evil. They went along with it, many of them knowing better, but they went along with it anyway. Many of them accepted the dirty coins of Caesar in the process, the sort of bribe that paid for their compliance. That's why they went along with it. But at the core, they were afraid. I will only correct one thing he said, though. He said it was most of the bishops. No, in 2020, it was all of them, every single one of the bishops with jurisdictional territory. All of them. Even the SSPX went along with this to some degree. Now, a lot of their priests kept their parishes open, but there was a sort of a solution to the 2020 problem, and the SSPX famously got on board with it briefly before they backpedaled on it later. But all of them did. All the bishops did. Every single one of them. And I know it was every one of them since there was not a single diocese in America or Europe that was open at that time. There was a, at least a six-week period where masses were not offered publicly. 
where if you needed to go to confession, you had to go jump through some real hoops to be able to get to confession. In some places, you couldn't get the sacraments at all. You remember, you remember drive through confession? Remember that nonsense? You remember confession where you had to actually speak loud enough that other people could hear you, and so they had you in some other separate room, and it was... Do you remember all that nonsense? That's what happened, because they all went along with it. They all pinched incense to Caesar, and it's time to stop. Very happy that that he that Harrison Butker took this stand. It needs to be said. Now you may be wondering, why haven't I mentioned his other comments, the ones the media are all focusing on? It's because everybody has talked about them already. Now, if you're not aware, he said things about, uh, let's call them relationships uh, and the role of man and wife that are in keeping with what the church has always taught about these things, but are generally very unpopular in the secular world. He dared to suggest that most women would be much happier if they were embracing their vocation as mothers. This is uh, borne out, by the way, by secular research recently showing that quite a lot of young women feel betrayed by the narrative they have been given and fed to by the secular culture on the ideology of the flesh of women. They have been sold a lie. Many of them are seeing this. That's why you have the trad wife movement. He had some things to say about that, and he was choking back tears when talking about it because he was framing it in his absolute love for his wife. And the reaction he got was, of course, ridiculous. There's already a Change.org petition trying to cancel him. 100,000 people have signed it, demanding he be canceled because of that. The NFL issued a statement very quickly, distancing themselves from him, saying he does not represent what the values of the National Football League. Even the National Catholic Reporter got in on it. Uh, Mr. Butker, in his commentary, in his uh, speech, said that uh, you mentioned the phrase staying in your lane in terms of vocations. And the National Catholic Reporter ran with that and basically told him to stay in his lane, as if his lane is football. The National Catholic Reporter is a secular outlet, calling itself a Catholic outlet. And they could not tell you the difference between a vocation and a job. Mr. Butker's job is to play professional football, and he does it very well. His vocation is husband and father. There's a difference. And he was commenting on vocations. I chose to mostly focus in this video on the the things he had to say about the bishops because literally no one else is talking about that. It's, again, nice to see somebody talking about that who's not just a Catholic podcaster. But, of course, he now faces being canceled because he told the truth. Because that's what he did. He told the truth. Some may not like what he had to say, and that's fine. Some may find what he had to say naive in the context of the modern world. I understand where people come from when they say that, that it would be nice to live in accordance with how the church says we should all live our married vocations. I understand where people come from with that. But it took courage for him to stay up, stand up and say that because despite what some would have you believe, we very much live can still in an age of cancellation. And he faces cancellation for his comments. Let me know what you think about this in the comments, please. Normally, I don't get kind of angry during a new good news video, but it's good news that somebody told them. Somebody with stature told them. Somebody who wasn't just some rad trad of the microphone and a camera on the internet, but some a relatively normal Catholic told them to their faces, basically, that they had been too afraid to do their jobs. But let me know what you think about this in the comments, please. Hit like and subscribe if you haven't. It does help. So does sharing this on social media. That helps, too. And as always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein, Ave Maria.